Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us for today's event about giving at Google, Google Serve and beyond. We're thrilled today to have Diane and Megan from Google.org joining us and they're going to be talking to us a little bit about the culture of giving at Google, our global monthly uh, service event that we have every year called Google Serve, as well as we'll talk about how you can get involved in your community and we'll talk also about Student Serve. Um, so do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Diane? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Solinger, and I have the privilege of leading the Googler engagement team here at Google.org. Google.org is the philanthropic arm of Google. And um, I work alongside Megan, who uh, can share a little bit about herself and uh, what her role is on the Google.org team. Hi, everyone. Uh, like Diane mentioned, we work on uh, getting Googlers involved with giving and volunteering in their local communities. Uh, in particular, I help run our two global campaigns, one uh, which is Google Serve, which we'll talk a little bit more about later on. It's our month of service uh, that we're currently in now, uh, where we get Googlers all around the world to give back to lo local organizations. Um, and then in December, we run a campaign that's similar called Giving Week, uh, which aims to get Googlers uh, giving money to their favorite nonprofit organizations. I think the interesting thing about Google is one, we were born a global company, so all our programs are always global, global so that everybody can participate. Every Googler should be able to have a philanthropic outlet, and we really believe in that. Um, for Google.org, you know, our mission really is to make sure that we're bringing the power of Google's people, products, and our resources to have significant impact on critical problems around the world. And internally, we really want to create this culture and fuel this movement of giving and volunteering among Googlers because um, I actually believe that most people want to do great things in the world. And so we want to give people that outlet. And we believe that the company has a role in making sure that people have that platform to do so. So that's what Megan and I spend our days trying to do, finding great ways for people to get involved in their local communities and to solve big problems with their skills and talent. Absolutely. And we do want to keep this session really interactive, so be sure to submit any questions you have for Diane and Megan in the comment section below, and at the end of the session we'll go ahead and go through those and answer as many questions as we can. Um, and before we jump in even further, I'd love to know a little bit about your backgrounds before coming to Google.org or even within Google.org. How did you come into these roles and really find your passion to empower Googlers and people all over the world to give back? Yeah, go ahead. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll start with that. Um, so I have been at Google for about six years now, and uh, prior to joining Google, I worked for a legal nonprofit uh, where I helped run the volunteer recruitment program there. Um, and that was my first job out of college. Uh, when I started college, I actually wanted to go into sports broadcasting. <laughs> uh, and after taking a couple of social justice courses, I quickly learned that uh, my interests and passions were really um, more in the nonprofit world and uh, wanting to help others kind of realize their passions as well. And so uh, after being at the nonprofit for about three years, I started looking for other opportunities and just stumbled upon Google. Um, I first joined thinking I would maybe just stay at Google for about a year. It was a recruiting position, so something completely outside of the nonprofit realm. And as soon as I joined Google, I realized uh, that the company really cares about helping Googlers uh, work on whatever they're passionate about. And so uh, I quickly met Diane and Diane's team uh, who uh, was helping Googlers get involved in all of these different areas. And after being here for about a year, helped run Google Serve. As and, a volunteer. Uh, as a volunteer, <laughs> yes. It was not my day job. Um, and after about four and a half years of working with Diane and her team not as a day job, uh, I finally was able to join the team full time and um, it's, it's been really great. Yeah. It's an interesting journey. A lot of people within Google start somewhere else and they migrate towards something else within the company. Uh, I came in as a uh, referral from someone who is on my team. So someone on my team man, uh, who I now manage actually referred me and he's actually the founder of Google Serve. So uh, Seth Marvin referred me into Google. I was giving him a, and another woman on our team a little bit of advice as a consultant on the outside, um, but I was in the not-for-profit or the NGO sector for over 25 years. Wow. 
and was consulting with companies to help them build these types of programs, uh, mostly tech companies. So I was lucky that Google was not only a client, but became my new employer just about five years ago. Next week will be five years for me. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, that's exciting. I mean, the mobility within the company to pursue your passions and then having external expertise and bringing that to Google. Those are two very common themes that we see with careers at Google. So it's wonderful to hear your stories. Yeah. Fantastic. So I guess I can pick it back up and we can talk a little bit about the, the way Google.org makes our investments. As I mentioned, we're the, we're the philanthropic arm or the charitable arm of the company. And so um, we say investment because we really think of this like social investment. Um, we have a large budget where we donate to charities, NGOs, nonprofits around the world. Um, really with this approach of trying to look at technology as a game changer, looking at really disruptive innovation within the space. It's not just a grant, but it's really where can technology move that organization further on their social mission. Um, we are like Google, so our criteria is very much around data and scale and for us, because we are the charitable arm, we really look at, you know, who are the people being left out? Where are the most disadvantaged populations? We want to bridge that gap through a tech data-driven strategy. And then um, be also because we're the charitable arm, we look at the NGO sector, the nonprofit sector is where we're going to make those investments. Um, so we bring capital, but we also bring our people. Googler's skills can really help an organization move forward. And then other expertise as well to kind of wrap our arms around these investments and give them the best of Google. Um, and we try to focus, just like most companies, we've gone through this internal process of just trying to figure out where can we have the most impact. And so we've landed on four key areas where we think that Google can move the needle the most. And from place to place around the world, education looks very different. But with the tech eye, we're trying to look at investments in, in technology for education to democratize education around the world. Economic opportunity is another key focus area for us because um, jobs of the future are going to be technology jobs and so we want to make sure that people understand those opportunities and as a company what our responsibility might be around that. Inclusion, uh, particularly around the areas of racial justice, very important to Google. We've made some very public investments in this space and continue to do so. Um, this should be a world for everyone. And crisis response, when there's a crisis, People turn to Google and we need to be there for them. So um, we really focus on crisis response as an area, particularly when there's something gone awry or something tragic in a community. Um, so really to kind of take it from our investment strategy down to our people strategy, Googler engagement for Google.org means we're going to get behind these pillars that I just mentioned, these focus areas, and our grantees and give them that big hug with our people. And the other thing that we do is because we want to make sure that there's a continuing, you know, wonderful place to work where we have a culture where people care about each other and care about the world, nurturing, nurturing a culture of volunteering and giving is really important as well. And that's where the big campaigns that Megan leads come in. So I'm going to hand it over to her to talk about the big one that we're in right now, which is Google Serve, the yes. month of service, all of June. Google Serve. Yes. Thanks. So before, before I jump in and talk about Google Serve specifically, uh, as Diane mentioned, we care a lot about um, the culture here at Google and making sure people feel like they have an outlet uh, to give back in the community. And so um, the campaigns are, are just one way uh, to get involved. They're sort of our, our biggest like at scale giving and volunteering moments. But outside of that, um, we encourage Googlers to, to get involved throughout the year with personal organizations that they care about. So whether that's volunteering at their kid's school or helping out at a local food bank, um, we really want Google Serve and Giving Week, our two pinnacle campaigns, to sort of be a springboard for ongoing volunteering and giving. Um, we also really encourage Googlers to uh, get involved uh, on a board if, if they want to kind of go that extra mile and, and um, kind of reach their, their next step in their philanthropic journey, um, but have really a, a ton of different opportunities for, for Googlers to, to give back. Um, and so as Diane mentioned, uh, Seth Marbin, who is part of our team, 10 years ago had an idea for this amazing cultural event at Google. He thought it would be a really great way um, for Googlers to all join together globally with a day of service. Um, he wanted to call it Google Serve-a-Palooza. <laughs> and um, 
just this gives a great example of, of Google's culture and how really, you know, if, if you have an idea, if there's something that you're really passionate about that you want to work on, you can really make it happen. And um, the idea gained a lot of traction and quickly they realized that they would need more than a day. And so uh, they organized our first ever Google Serve. Uh, it was a week of service back then. Um, where uh, I think it was 30 offices at the time participated um, in different volunteering opportunities to get Googlers engaged. Uh, that year we had 3,000 Googlers participate, and now as we're celebrating our 10th anniversary of the program, we have over 20,000 Googlers that are signed up, um, and it's taking place in uh, over 100 offices around the world. Um, and so it really is a special time where uh, not only we can encourage Googlers to get involved, and in some cases it might be their first time ever volunteering. Um, for other Googlers, they're, they've been doing Google Serve for a long time, and they found kind of their, their philanthropic uh, passions, and they are helping lead projects now and get others involved. Um, but really, we have, we have opportunities at every end of the spectrum. Uh, as Diane mentioned, we have our new social impact pillars that we're trying to closely, closely align with. Um, and so it's really this balance of, you know, letting Googlers volunteer with organizations that they're passionate about. And for those that maybe don't know what they want to do, um, providing suggestions that align in these areas of impact because we believe that, um, like Diane mentions, when Googlers give their skills uh, to an organization, that that is really uh, the most beneficial use for, for these uh, charities and, and nonprofits. And I think what's really cool about it is the grassroots nature of it, not just that Seth has had this idea and it started there, but that Googlers around the world are creating their own projects. We can't possibly, as a small core team, create all these projects for 20,000 or more Googlers to do in a month. So there's a lot of grassroots efforts and ownership. And I think, you know, we like to think as owners here at Google, this is one way that people can step up and take a leadership role and, and run a project and get people involved. And it's great for that team culture, you know, as someone who is newer to a team, say, one of their teammates is really passionate, says, let's all get together and spend a day, you know, instead of our normal meetings and working on our projects, instead, you know, get out in the community and do something together. It's great for small teams, large teams, and to be able to share your passions. You know, Google, we bring our whole selves to work. So sharing your, you know, philanthropic passions, you know, Absolutely. with your coworkers is a huge part of it. For yeah, sure. I think, you know, it, it totally is. I think that being able to give back to the community is great, but I think being able to sort of foster that relationship with your teammates and, and do it together is a really important part of, of not only Google Serve, but team volunteering throughout the year. Um, and I think to Diane's point about um, Googlers just really coming together and, and helping to pull this off, um, like I mentioned earlier, I started out as a, as a Google Serve volunteer mm -hmm. helping with Diane's team. and. Um, we have over 100 Googlers who spend 20% of their time um, working totally outside of their day job, helping to, to pull off this campaign. And um, that's, you know, mobilizing other Googlers to create projects and making sure that we have all of the appropriate marketing material and communications. And so we're really util utilizing Googlers from all over the company uh, to help pull off a campaign like this. Uh, so it's really pretty special. It really is. It's a great time, my favorite time of the year at Google, for sure. Me too. <laughs> Megan's like, it's the most wonderful time of yeah. the year. This, and then I say that again in, in November. We do giving away yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we thought uh, it might be helpful to end by talking about how you might be able to uh, create your own volunteering opportunity. Um, and so I think the most important thing uh, is being able to identify a nonprofit and identify what that nonprofit needs. Um, and once you've done that, you know, you can figure out how much uh, time the nonprofit is needing. Is it something that you can organize, you know, in one afternoon by bringing 10, 10 others with you to, to the nonprofit? Is it something that they need a little bit of extra uh, love and support, you know, maybe a week or maybe it's an ongoing, um, an ongoing opportunity that they need help with? So really identifying uh, where that nonprofit could use your, your help. And then, you know, what particular challenges are they trying to address? Um, and how can you make sure you get uh, the right people there who have the skills to, uh, to help out with that? And so you can see uh, on this slide that we put together just a couple of examples. Um, if, you know, a nonprofit, for example, is looking for fundraising support, 
um, you might uh, find a few folks who can help put together a marketing plan for them. And you know, this would be ideally people that have uh, skills or, or experience working in, in marketing or working in sales and then can really help sort of identify you know, what the nonprofit is, is looking for and how to kind of craft that personal uh, um, fundraising plan for, for the nonprofit. Um, I think you know there are a lot of different ways that that um, you can work together to to come up with projects that that folks can get involved. But uh, the biggest thing is really kind of like Diane mentioned, uh, matching together what the nonprofit needs and and matching it with with the right skills, and that's really where the the magic happens for the nonprofit. Absolutely, no, that's wonderful. And I think you know the first step is really just to try something, right? It's to to, is to say what's something that I know about in my community that I can try, see how it goes, and then you know you can take the next step from there to try different types of philanthropy, different types of giving, um, different you know lengths of service and things like that. And bringing in the right people to help you too, I mm -hmm. think is is a really important thing because we all have different different skills and different passions, and I think in particular when we can bring. Uh, we can bring folks together who have a different set of skills and, and work directly with one nonprofit. That's where we see um, a lot of a lot of great things happen as well. It reminds me of um, a friend of ours. His name is Chris Jarvis, and uh, he and Angela Parker run an organization called Realize Worth, and they talk about the volunteer journey. And there's three stages, and some people start at, at different stages, but a lot of people start at the first stage, which he calls the travel, the tourist. There's a tourist, there's a traveler, and there's a guide. Mm -hmm. And the tourist is someone who goes in once and just kind of looks at things and like does the thing and leaves. The traveler is the one that comes back and start realizing that like could be better organized. Maybe we need to move the chairs. Maybe we need to reorganize the room and comes back and repeats. And then the guide is the one that steps up and brings others along with them and goes back with others. And I think some people start as a guide very rarely. Um, so if you're starting as that tourist, you do have to just start somewhere. But ask those questions in that in that charitable organization or that nonprofit or NGO. Like, what is keeping you guys up at night? Uh, like, yeah, I really love that we came here and planted this garden or did this project. But is this like the most critical thing for your organization? How can how can I bring others back to make this better for you Absolutely. and um, start that journey to get maybe to having more guides out in the world? That would be great. And speaking of you know your journeys, we also want to talk about how you can get involved in the month of June as Googlers all over the world are giving back with Google Serve. Um, you can get involved with Student Serve. So you can volunteer all over the world and uh, go ahead and share with us exactly how you're doing it. So you can um, take action as a participant in the project. So you can um, help spread the word about a project. Because really, you know, a huge part of giving is not just giving your individual time or effort or expertise, but it's helping that organization, you know, expand their reach um, and expand their resources. You may tap into, you know, groups of people that are really interested in helping but didn't know it existed. So spreading the word um, and really finding out about related activities as well. So. Mm -hmm. You know, not just giving in the month of June for Google Serve or Student Serve, but you know, seeing if you can make that a part of your a part of your routine. And I think one thing I would add to that too is we find you know if, if you're really excited about this and and you're um, wanting to get involved with more ways to give back to the community, um, but you don't know how you want you don't want to do it alone or you want to bring others with you. Really, the best way to get people involved is to invite them. Mm -hmm. um, we've just had the most success getting uh, Googlers all around the world uh, giving back by asking them to join us. And so, um, especially with with the social environment that we live in and social media, really leveraging that to to get others to join you as well. Absolutely, starting to lead a project. You know, making sure that you know people that you're participating with know how to share and know how to share what they're doing in the world. Um, it's great. So as you are getting out in your local communities and participating in this service, we'd love for you to share your experiences with the hashtag StudentServe. Um, be sure to tag Google Students as well. Um, and you know, share it across all of your social media platforms. We'd love to see, as Googlers are doing service all over the world uh, in June and beyond, we'd love to see what you all are doing in your local communities um, with the hashtag StudentServe. So do be sure to share that. Um, and I think next we'll go ahead and jump into some of the live questions that are coming in from our audience um, so that we can get straight to those. So the first question is, and this is really starting at kind of square one, how do I first get involved with the project and, and find the first thing to try for StudentServe? 
Well, I, I'll start. You add on because sure. I think we may be similar. Who knows? <laughs> um, start with yourself first. Like, what do I care about? And then, yay, Google, search. Um, maybe that's a place to start. And look for organizations in your community that are focused on that issue. Um, ask your friends, like, what do they support? What are they interested in? Do they know a good organization? Because social is really important, I think, for finding something that validates an organization. And then there are some organizations out in the world that actually help match make. So um, there's the Points of Light Institute, which has um, hands-on affiliates, hands-on affiliates all around the world. And uh, they broker volunteer opportunities in local communities. So you can just plug into something. Um, volunteer Match is a portal that you can go and look and actually look within like a certain mile radius of where you live or work and go to school and find a place to volunteer. Maybe there's a project there that would tap your interest. And speaking of tap, there's an organization called Taproot. Mm -hmm. So Taproot actually is really much like using consulting skills, relying on people to bring their strengths and their skills to help nonprofits and charities with big like business issues that they might be having. And so it's a cohort. So you end up with a group of people all trying to solve maybe something like Megan was saying, like, like a marketing plan and bring people around with their skills to do that. So those are just a couple of organizations that can help on the ground if you're looking for like a gateway, but Google search will work for you too. That's great. All right, next question is, what are some examples of projects that have been done at Google Serve? I think it'd be fun if we shared maybe one that we've done or one that you know of that you think is particularly fun. Yeah, I think one that's been uh, going on for all 10 years actually is called our Help a Hero Get Hired program. And this actually takes place in offices all across the U.S. where we bring in veterans and we help them work on their resumes, job skill training. Um, and it's, it's really a great opportunity, again, of that, that skills-based volunteering where Googlers can, can go in and, and share their experiences uh, with the veterans. But it's something that um, we've also heard from a lot of Googlers. It's often their first um, first time volunteering and they have such a good experience with the program that they not only come back um, year after year for that particular project but also have gone in to continue volunteering uh, with veterans in a lot of a lot of cases. I think a, another idea that's really blown up over the past few years is all around human-centered design. So we have our own acronym for it. We call it CSI Labs, but they're basically human-centered design workshops. And a lot of our grantee partners, we've been working with them on specific problems where Googlers will go in a room with them for a half day and work on understanding their issues, um, kind of getting in their shoes, and then coming out the end with a variety of prototypes that the, the nonprofit or charity partner can go back and work on. So right now, there's several going around in London, New York, and here here in the San Francisco Bay Area um, with an organization called Mercy Corps. They're focusing on trying to help Syrian refugees with their career paths and figuring out how to help them build their skills for their next job wherever they end up. And it's a huge problem to think about when you think of so many people being displaced because of this crisis and um, the creativity of having our employees in the room with the Mercy Corps staff who work with the Syrian refugees um, to come to maybe to some ideas that could help these people further. So I get excited about that kind of work too. Absolutely. In addition to the quirky stuff, <laughs> like diving the bottom of Lake Zurich, um, which happens almost every year by our engineers in Zurich, um, helping the fish up in Waterloo, Canada, like moving the fish. They dump, they stock a lake. They put all the fish in the same place and guess what? They become prey. So people go out in canoes, wow. very Canadian, with a bucket, and they move the fish. Oh, wow. So we have very skilled projects, like Help Hero Get Hired in these design workshops, and then we've got people in lakes, uh, both in Canada and yeah. Zurich. I know that the, there's a lot of beautification projects as well, which is really satisfying. Um, I know in the past a lot of people have you know, created murals or gardens, and to see those murals and gardens, you know, mm -hmm. year after year, to say, wow, I, I helped create that um, is something that's really touching in your, in your local community. Um, next question coming in is how has technology and data played a role in Google Serve? And it may have evolved over, you know, the ten, we're celebrating 10 years now. Um, it's probably evolved. There's much more data now than there was, you know, year one. So how has that evolved? Yeah, it, it absolutely has. And I'd say just starting with the technology piece, actually, my first year 
uh, when I started working on Google Serve, uh, we were actually using Volunteer Match as a way to register Googlers for projects. And since then, we've built our own internal platform, uh, which has a way for Googlers not only during Google Serve to get involved and find projects, um, but throughout the year as well. And so just seeing the way that our internal tools have evolved and grown and will continue to over the next few years um, is really cool. Um, and then I think uh, data, of course, is, is always helping our program grow because we can see particularly what, what Googlers care about during Google Serve. Where are Googlers volunteering? Um, you know, do we see any trends with uh, you know, folks that volunteer for the first time for Google Serve and then are continuing to either stay with that organization or go with a new one. And so I think um, we, we, definitely, uh, we definitely use data all the time, um, not just for Google Serve, but with all of the programs that we're really using to try to leverage Googlers with. Because as Google Serve grows, Google is growing too. Yeah. So there's new Googlers every year Absolutely. who have never participated in Google Serve before. And a lot of their, you know, more tenured teammates are probably showing them the ropes, but also to have the data to understand, you know, people who are newer to Google Serve, what kind of projects are they pursuing or are they interested in? Yeah, and one thing that we're measuring this year that we haven't measured before is uh, to see Googlers that are creating their own project during Google Serve, will they create another opportunity after Google Serve? Um, and mm -hmm. so really looking at that, um, sort of the guides now, as, as Diane mentioned, um, seeing if, if this is just something that they're doing during Google Serve or is it something that they really do continue on throughout the year. Uh, we suspect that it'll be the latter, but I'm excited to, to measure that. Absolutely. And I think we have time for one more question, um, and that is, are all interns and employees allowed to do these projects? So who at Google is participating? We mentioned that it's all over the world, yep. every single Google office. Um, but can, can you tell us a little bit about all the Googlers who are... Yeah, well, every every Googler has 20 hours of work time off to volunteer. So, um, and then people volunteer on top of that uh, uh, with manager discretion oftentimes. <laughs> um, and then for interns, absolutely during Google Serve, interns are included. And throughout the year, interns are included. Um, but the biggest flux of interns is this time of year. Absolutely. Yeah. All of our summer interns all over the world who are, get to participate in this exciting month. I, I have a feeling it was planned for June. So that, you know, specifically with our interns in mind, so that they could participate. I don't know if it was that thought out, was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it ended well, up working that. out. It worked yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. I would, I would say, too, um, the one cool thing about Google Serve, we have a lot of projects on the weekends as well. And so mm -hmm. we encourage Googlers to bring their friends and family to those projects that happen outside of business hours. Great. And that's kind of what this is, too. Like, let's, <laughs> let's get everybody yes. serving. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And we have one more question coming in. Um, this is our last question, and it says, me and my team are planning for a renewable energy forum that includes all university students here in our city. How can we incorporate Google Serve in our event? That's a great question. Wow. There's, um, what is the organization that does the solar installations? That's a cool. Uh, Grid Alternatives. I don't know what city you're in, but, and if you're in the U.S., there's an organization called Grid, like Power Grid Alternatives. And um, that would be a neat project where you could go out and actually do a project with them and do a clean energy project Absolutely. for student serve. Absolutely, and to hashtag student serve with your experience, um, you know, take photos, share with us exactly, you know, what you're doing in the planning stages, and see if we can get involved. Mm -hmm. um, so just be sure to let us know to tag Google students and use the hashtag and let us know kind of as you're working on the project how things are going. We can see how we can get involved. Great. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, Diane and Megan, Thanks, for being guys. here. Go Student Serve! Yes, Woo! go Student Serve. We are so glad you could join us today. Um, and be sure to get out there and serve your local community in June and even beyond June um, with Student Serve. Uh, and have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye. Bye.